comes my way Cause I put my hope and trust In the only one who's faithful every day In the darkest night You are by my side I'm never alone because I know It's not working. What's not working? I'm trying to pump up this flat tire, but the oh. pump is not working. Let me take a look. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, try it. Pump it a bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not working. Um, oh, 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 you know what? Maybe you'd have to flip down this little doohickey right here. Oh. Yeah. Try it now. Okay. A little faster. Is it working? Keep going. Now? Yeah. I think it's working! to each and everyone from far and wide. From high and low. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and this is the So-and-So Show. That rhymes. Yeah, we are so happy to welcome you into John's basement studio. Yes, come see my basement where I fold my laundry. Ah, it's folded. Find popcorn in the oddest places. Mmm, chewy. Find a place to cry alone after watching a sad movie. Why? 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 Why'd you have to let the sadness overtake you, Artex? Why? Or sometimes, cry with your friends. Why didn't you fight it, Artex? The story is never ending. Why won't the story end? <laughs> It's so sad. So very sad. We've got a great show today. John, I yes. must ask, what does the word upcycle mean to you? I'm not sure. Oh, a unicycle has one wheel, a bicycle has two wheels, a tricycle has three wheels. An icicle has no wheels. <laughs> True! But an upcycle, is it a bicycle you ride up? Nope. Hey, you know what recycling is, right? 
Reduce, reuse, recycle. Yes, but instead of recycling or throwing something away, upcycling means you can make something into something new or better. Okay, upcycle. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, okay where do you keep your recycling? Uh, right here. Oh, good. Well, let's dump it out. Awesome. Okay. Oh, good. Perfect. All right. It's Let, in here somewhere. Yeah, it's great. Now yeah. let's uh, let's upcycle this stuff. Let's make something better. Do you have what? Do, what do you want to? Self-propelled cars. Okay. We'll make self-propelled cars, and then we'll race them. Oh, it sounds fun. Let's montage. Woo! Oh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Pretty good, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, mine's got a mouse trap. Ooh, dangerous. Hey, yeah. don't try this at home without supervision, kids. Exactly. You ready to race? Sure. See you on the track. What? Oh. <laughs> Gentlemen, start your engines. I am so confused. On your mark, get set, go! Looks like I won. Upcycling is fun. Yeah, fun. It's Bible story time with Kellen. How's it going, Kellen? Not bad, gentlemen. You got a story for us today? I do indeed. Well, by all means, take it away. Yeah. Our story today comes from a letter written by the Apostle Paul to a church in Corinth, which was a city in Greece. Paul wrote about Jesus' followers in Macedonia who gave what they had to help the church in Judea. And here to help me talk about them are my friends from... Kids The Apostle Paul helped start churches all over the place. Hi, I'm Paul. Paul would write letters to the churches helping to teach and encourage them as they grew. One of the things Paul wrote in his letter to the church in Corinth... <clears throat> I've got it from here, Kellen. Take it away. Brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given to the churches in Macedonia. They have suffered a great deal. Now, we don't know how the people in Macedonia had suffered. Some people think it could have been a famine. So, we got anything for dinner? All we have is some stale bread and a handful of beans. Same as last night? Yep! It may also be that the Macedonians were being treated badly because they followed Jesus. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Is that a Macedonian Christian? <laughs> it's them again. Yeah, and uh, if we can be strong. We can be strong. We have an amazing God Life's who loves just us. just gonna get harder for you. We'll take everything you have. Yeah. We'll punish you for praying and worshiping your God. <laughs> the fact is, we don't know exactly what was going on with the Macedonian church or why they were suffering. But we do know this. Paul? But in their suffering, their joy was more than full. Even though they were very poor, they gave very freely. Completely on their own, they begged us for the chance to share in serving the Lord's people in that way. They did more than we expected. They were poor and they were suffering, but somehow they had joy. And even though they didn't have much to give, somehow they gave freely. Did you hear? The church in Judea needs our help. Oh yeah? Yeah. We gotta do something, but we don't really have much to give. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, do you still have that can of nickels under your bed? I do, yes. And now, uh, what about you? Do you still have that ultra rare beanie boo you wanted the carnival? I mean, it's gotta yes. be worth something. Yes, right. Paul? Are these worth something? What is it? Yeah, this will help a lot. Can you afford it? Yeah, uh, our God has already given us so much. We just want to give back. Thank you. Thank you. Not bad. Definitely didn't have nickels or beanie boos back then, but I think you get the idea. Even though the Macedonians didn't have much, they were content with what God had given them. So content that they were willing to share what they'd been given. Now, what does that mean for us? Not all of us have a lot of money we can give. But there are other things you can give to others. I'm pretty good at piano. And sometimes my little brother has a tough time learning. So I could help him practice. There's a kid in my class at school that my friends were making fun of. I can tell them that they should stop. Sometimes my granddad likes to tell me stories, and even though they're stories I've heard before, I can still take the time to listen. We all have something to give. We may have money or stuff. We may have talent or time or strength. But like the Jesus followers in Macedonia, we should look for ways to share what God has given us. Thanks for helping tell the story, everyone. Amazing. Okay, anytime. Later, Kellen. Of course, see you later. See you later. Wow, so good. Yeah, didn't the kids do a great job? Yeah, and that was a great story too, Kellen. Absolutely. You know, it's crazy that even though they didn't have a lot, they gave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. A lot of times those with the least amount of money or stuff can be the most content. Maybe when you don't have a lot of stuff, you can more easily focus on the things that really matter. I never thought about that. Yeah. But it's important to remember that no matter how much you have, you always have something to give. No doubt. We'll see you next time. Yeah, thanks, Kellen. See you, fellas. You know what? I got it. it it's like upcycling. What is? Well, when we take what we have and we share it with others, it's making things better. Upcycling. Hey, good point. Yeah, it happens occasionally. Reveal the question. How can you use what you have to help others yeah, yeah, you've already heard some ideas from Kidspective, but why don't you think up some others? And, mm -hmm. and remember, it doesn't have to involve money. No, it can be time. Or your talents. Or your creativity. Or, or your courage. Yeah, wait, we're giving them too many ideas. Oh, right, right. You, you answer the question. How can you use what you have to help others? And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. See ya. Laundry. Why doesn't it work when I do it? Yeah. It's not even plugged in. Oh, that's why it wasn't working. I just, I just needed it dull. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing Charlie Chaplin over there?